Welcome to North River Church Online. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. As you know, we are nearing the end of construction and we will be moving into our new facility before we know it. We are less than $600,000 away from reaching our goal of walking into our new building debt free. In light of this goal, we launched the Giving Tree campaign showing you exactly what we need to reach our goal. We have filled in 54 leaves and have filled in $55,670 on the trunk of the tree, which represents the building construction cost. There are 14 leaves remaining on the tree, and we would love for everyone to participate in this giving campaign. No gift is too small to make an impact. You can find the updated giving tree on our website, gonorthriver.org slash update. Over the course of this bizarre year, you've been faithful to give to our regular budget as well as the building fund. If you'd like to give today, you can give online through our website, gonorthriver.org slash give, or by texting NRC and the amount to 73256. If you'd like to give online towards the giving tree, simply add a memo regarding which leaf you are giving towards. Also, feel free to mail a check or bring a check to our office. The church office address is 5517 Fort Hamer Road. Life groups have launched and it's a great time to join a life group. If you're interested in joining a group or maybe you have questions about our life groups, please fill out the form on our website, gonorthriver.org slash lifegroups. We will do our best to offer group options that match your schedule and connect you with an incredible group of believers. Please take a moment to pray about being part of a life group and enjoying the kind of community that can only be found in the body of Christ. This evening, we have The Swell for students. We're looking forward to a fun evening of games, worship, Bible study, and small groups. Students, join us tonight at the church office from 5 to 7 p.m. Lastly, we want to give you an update on staffing regarding our student ministry and children's ministry. Our personnel team has approved moving forward with a search for a full-time student pastor and part-time children's director. Please be praying about this process and the exciting future of our student and kids' ministries. Thank you again for joining us online. We invite you to worship with us as we sing and hear from God's Word. Let's worship together. Sing Praise is Rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Returning to you. 
find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Cause when we see, it's when we see it, we find strength. Good morning, church family. It's great to be able to spend time together in God's Word again, and so I want to encourage you to go ahead and grab your copy of the Scriptures. Join me in Acts chapter 21. We're going to continue on in our series through the book of Acts, and the message is entitled this week, Counting the Cost. I saw a video not long ago, and it was absolutely fascinating. Uh, It was Bill Gates, and he was on one of the talk shows. I can't remember which one, but they were asking him to try and name the prices of some regular everyday grocery items. And Bill Gates, multi-billionaire, probably hasn't shopped for himself in years and years and years. And so he's trying to guess the cost of some of these items. And the audience is laughing because he has absolutely no idea how much these items actually cost. On some, he's super high. On others, he's super low. And it's just an entertaining time. So you may want to check that out just for the personal benefit of laughing a little bit at a multi-billionaire who's got no clue what shopping prices look like when we go to the store. All that to say, what we're going to look at this morning is really a conversation, a description in Paul's life of an event that takes place as he's getting ready to go to Jerusalem and several people interacting with him and telling him to count the cost. In fact, telling him on the front end that it is very likely that you are going to be imprisoned and you very well may die if you go to Jerusalem. So remember, Paul is finishing up his journey back through the churches that he had helped plant, helped start, and he is heading towards going into Jerusalem with this offering that he has taken up from these churches. And he's getting ready. He's finishing up with the elders in Ephesus last week. And this week, he's finishing out that journey going to Jerusalem. And so I want us to pick up in Acts chapter 21, beginning in verse 1. Let's look what Luke records in these verses, verses 1 through 16. And when we had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload its cargo." And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey. And they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemus, and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, 
This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who holds these belts and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Mason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. Father, we ask this morning that you would open our eyes, that we would be able to see. You would open our ears, that we would be able to hear. And that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we'd be ready to respond to your word and to your spirit. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. You know, as we look at Acts chapter 21, it's really fascinating, this peek behind the curtain of what's going on prior to Paul heading into Jerusalem. And in fact, what we are witnessing in this text is the precursor of Paul's ministry from this point forward. In fact, what's going to happen over the next number of weeks as we walk through the remainder of the book of Acts is we're going to see time and time again that many people are telling Paul along the journey, first here heading to Jerusalem, then as he's getting ready to head to Rome, hey, Paul, don't do that. You realize that you very well are going to be imprisoned. You very well are going to lose your life. It is going to cost you a lot to move forward in completing the mission that Jesus has laid out for you to complete. And I want you to notice as we walk through this, the response of Paul almost every single time is not, oh man, maybe we should pause and really think about this. No, at every juncture, what Paul says is, it doesn't matter what it costs. I'm willing to pay whatever price to follow Jesus. If you're taking notes, write down this main idea. It's going to frame our time together in the text this morning and, and in our time of application following this first part of the message. And it's this truth. It is worth following Jesus regardless of the cost. It is worth following Jesus regardless of the cost. So look with me back, verses 1 through 11. We see Paul continuing on in this journey. He is moving down the coastline, getting ready to head into Jerusalem. He's stopping at cities along the way. And what we see is that at several different junctures, there are those who come to him and say to him, Hey, Paul, you probably don't want to go to Jerusalem. Paul, have you really thought about what's going to happen when you go to Jerusalem? You are going to be persecuted. You are going to be imprisoned. You are going to face difficulty if you continue on in this journey. We see this first happen in verse 4. It says, Having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days, and through the Spirit, listen to this, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. Paul, don't go. Paul moves on from that city down in verse 7. It says, when we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemus and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, they departed and came to Caesarea. They entered Philip's house. Philip, we encountered back in Acts chapter 6, one of the first deacons, but also an evangelist, a preacher and teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied, who received a word from the Lord and were able to declare that word to others. And then we also see here that a guy by the name of Agabus, we've encountered Agabus before, Paul has interacted with him before, and he comes on the scene as well and says to Paul, in fact, in very vibrant motions, he actually takes Paul's belt and binds his own hands and binds his own feet and says, if you go to Jerusalem, this is exactly what's going to happen to you. So what we see going on in the text in the first 11 verses is this very clear truth. Paul knew without a doubt that following Jesus would cost him. 
Paul was not unaware of that. In fact, Paul already knew from the very beginning when he trusted Jesus as his Savior that following Jesus would cost him. But even now, he is being told by others that this is exactly what is going to happen. You are going to be in prison. You very likely are going to give your life if you continue down this path. Paul was not unaware of that. He knew following Jesus would cost him. So not only did Paul know that following Jesus would cost him, but even those who were around him, many were urging Paul to avoid paying what it would cost. Look with me at verse 12. This is what we encounter in the text. When we notice that Luke here is including himself. So Luke, who wrote Acts, is including himself in this conversation. He, along with the others who were traveling with Paul, often those within the early church, he says, we heard this. That was the message that Paul was going to be imprisoned if he went to Jerusalem. And we urged him not to go to Jerusalem. So just picture that in your mind just for a minute. Paul is getting word at every stop along the journey as he is heading towards Jerusalem. People are telling him all along, the Lord is revealed to us. The Spirit is saying to us, we are hearing, we are telling you that if you continue on in this journey, if you continue heading towards Jerusalem, you are going to be in prison. You are very likely to die. And those who are collectively hearing that are saying, don't go. Don't pay that price. And I, I, here's the interesting thing. I think they really meant well. Like, I think they were looking at Paul and they had his best welfare in mind and they did not want him to endure persecution or have to walk through these trials or be imprisoned or be killed. They said, Paul, just, just slow down. I mean, there's a lot of us who could take these monies to the Jerusalem church. We could handle this for you. Just don't step foot in Jerusalem. Many were urging him, don't go. I want you to notice Paul's resolve. In verses 13 through 16, Paul determined to follow Jesus regardless of the cost. Regardless of what it costs, Paul says, I am moving forward following Jesus. Look with me at verse 13. Paul answered, what are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready, listen to this, not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul says, I really am not concerned about imprisonment. I'm not concerned about death. In fact, I am willing to pay whatever price it takes to go into Jerusalem and to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, since he would not be persuaded, Luke says, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem and some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Mason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. Even though Paul was warned, even though Paul knew that he was likely to face persecution, likely to be in prison, likely to lose his life following Jesus. For Paul, it was worth it. It was worth whatever price he had to pay. Let's reflect on that for a few moments as we sing together. Reflect on the price that Paul ultimately would pay and his determination, his resolve that following Jesus was worth it. Let's worship.
let's walk back through the text this morning as we think about some application that we can take from Acts chapter 21, verse 1 through 16, and look at our own lives. How do we take what Paul encountered here? How do we look at this resolve to follow Jesus, whatever the cost, and apply that type of mentality, that type of resolve in our own lives? Well, let's think about just the first realization, and that is there is always a cost to following Jesus. There is always a cost to following Jesus. In fact, Jesus made that comment to his disciples. He said, no one builds a house without first counting the cost. And and if you are going to follow me, it's going to take counting the cost. It is going to cost you something to follow Jesus. Now, as we look initially, when we first trust Jesus as our Savior, we know that for us to count the cost there is to really put our lives on the line, to say to Jesus, there is no way that I can save myself. You are the only one who can save me from my sin. So I am going to lay down my pride. I'm going to lay down my self-sufficiency, and I'm going to receive what you did on my behalf. Maybe that's a step that you need to take. And maybe you've not taken that step because you know that that's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you recognizing that you're not good enough to save yourself. It's going to cost you laying aside your pride, laying aside your self-righteousness and realizing that Jesus Christ is the only one who could save you. And maybe you need to lay down the realization or the thought that you can't be saved. Like maybe you think, I'm not, there's no way that God could save me. And that's pride as well. And I want to encourage you to set that aside. Lay your pride aside and recognize that salvation through Jesus Christ is possible for anyone and everyone who trusts in Him as their Savior. But I want you to notice in life as well, it costs to follow Jesus. And we can look and through history and we can look even now across the world and we see brothers and sisters in Christ paying an incredible price to follow Jesus. And the realization is for us, that same thing holds true in our lives. If we're really going to follow Jesus the way he's called us to follow him, it will cost us. Now we think about that. What are some things that it may cost As we look at our own lives as believers, where are the items that we recognize where we are having to pay a price to follow Jesus? Well, think about it just in a few contexts. One is our time. You know, it costs time to follow Jesus. You say, Michael, what do you mean by that? Well, if we are going to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, just like any other relationship, it takes time. And so Jesus can't be on the back burner of our lives and we simply say, hey, I'll get to that on Sunday or maybe I'll get to that if I can squeeze him in in some certain amount of time. The realization for us, the truth is it's going to cost us time to follow Jesus. Not only that, but it'll cost us resources to follow Jesus. You see, here's what scripture teaches us, that where our treasure is, that's exactly where our heart is. You get talking about money and church and people kind of feel a little icky in that situation, but Jesus talked about money more than he talked about anything else in his ministry. And the reason is because money points to what we value. And so if we're going to follow Jesus, it will cost us financially to follow him. In fact, we will rearrange priorities in our lives, financially speaking, so that we can support God's work and what he is doing. So to follow Jesus, it will cost us in a financial way. It will also cost us in terms of priorities. You see, this is one that I think speaks to every single one of us. The way in which we prioritize things that are of value in our lives tells exactly what we value most. And as we think about this, as we think about a world in which we live that is constantly pulling at us, constantly telling us, spend your time here, invest yourself here, make this a priority, here's the realization. 
Jesus Christ, if he is the priority in our lives, everything else comes underneath him, meaning that he is king and we are not of our own lives. And so I want to ask you just the simple question, what does it cost you to follow Jesus? As you think about your relationships, as you think about your finances, as you think about your time, what does it cost you in those categories, in those areas, to follow Jesus? Here's the second truth that I want us to think through, this second point of application, and it's this. There will always be a temptation to avoid paying the cost of following Jesus. There will always be a temptation to avoid paying what it costs to follow Jesus. We saw that in the story here with Paul. What we saw in this story is that those who were around Paul, those who really, and I think they did, had Paul's best interest at heart, at least in their own hearts and minds. They were really concerned about him. They didn't want to see him die. They didn't want to see him in prison. They didn't want him to go to Jerusalem for that very reason. And so they said to him, hey, Paul, don't go. Don't do this. Don't move forward on this trajectory. And the reality is for us, those same people are often in our lives. They mean well. And yet what they're saying to us really is a distraction or a temptation from following Jesus. Sometimes that person is ourselves. We are talking ourselves out of paying the cost of following Jesus. You see, when we talk about following Jesus and the cost that we must pay to do that, it's not like we have to do that to earn God's favor. That's not it at all. What it really means is that we value Jesus above everything else. And the temptation will always be to say, well, you know, he'll be okay if I compromise in this area or if I don't move forward in this area or if I don't make this a priority. There will always be a temptation to shift into a different direction or into a different mindset or focus in on a different priority. There will always be a distraction that is put before us to try to dissuade us and keep us from moving forward, walking in a relationship with Jesus Christ the way he's called us to walk. Think about that personally in your life. What, what are those temptations What are those temptations in your life that seek to distract you from paying the cost of following Jesus? You know, one of the easy ones that that I've seen in my own life, one of the ways that, that as we think about spending time with Jesus, as we think about reading our Bibles, getting up in the morning and spending time with Him, and one of the temptations for me, I'm sure it's not this way for you, is my phone. My phone is a temptation. And you know what I have to do? I have to lock it down in the mornings so that I can spend time with Jesus and not be distracted by that temptation. That's an easy step that I've taken to try and make sure that I do what's most important first in my day. But what is it for you? What are those temptations? Maybe it's a temptation not to really engage being in church. Now, right now, we're engaging online, but just a couple of weeks from now, we'll be able to meet in a building once again and worship the Lord together. But let's be honest with one another. There's a lot of temptations on Sundays, isn't there? A lot of opportunities to focus in on other things, whether it's kids' sports or whether it's on the boat or whether it's going on vacation or whatever it may be. But I want to ask you a simple question. Is that simply highlighting that whatever you're doing there holds more value than walking in relationship with Jesus? Because the truth is, Jesus says he loves his church. He laid his life down for his church. And he calls us to love his church, to be a part of his church. And so I want to ask you, what are those temptations? I think it would be incredibly helpful for you to think through that this week. Maybe even to take out a piece of paper and to write those down, to identify them so that you know this is a temptation in my life to seek to draw me away 
from paying the price of following Jesus, for being willing to pay whatever it costs to walk with him. And then I want you to notice lastly, you will never regret following Jesus regardless of the cost. That's the thing Paul said here. He says, regardless of what it may cost me, I'm willing to pay that price. I'm willing to pay the price of my life if it means following Jesus. And I want you to know something. It's worth it. It is worth whatever sacrifices. It is worth whatever price must be paid to walk with Jesus. It is worth it. In fact, as we think about an example of that, Paul is certainly one that comes to mind, but let's just think about Jesus himself who was willing to lay down his life in obedience to his heavenly Father. Think about that for just a second. Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, stepped foot out of heaven, knowing that God, the Father's plan, was for him to lay down his life for us. He knew that. In fact, he knew that from the beginning. He knew that as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if it be your will, take this cup from me, but not my will, yours be done. In fact, Jesus' own disciples said to him, no, you, you don't need to move forward with that. In fact, Jesus had to rebuke Peter, saying to him, get behind me, Satan, when Peter tried to say, you don't need to go to the cross. But Jesus was willing. Because he knew it was worth it. He knew that laying his life down was worth it so that you and I could have a relationship with him. And if he is willing to lay his life down for us, how much more so should we be willing to lay our lives down for him? I want you to take a few moments and reflect during this time of application as we sing, to think through some of those questions, to think through some of those statements. What does it mean to pay the price, to be willing to pay whatever it costs to follow Jesus in your life? What are the temptations? What are the distractions that would seek to keep you from doing that? And then ask yourself the question, is it worth it? whatever it costs. And I hope you'll come to the same answer that I've come to. And that answer is absolutely. Father, we ask this morning that you would continue to work in our hearts as we sing. As we look at this example that Paul lays out for us, that we too would be willing to say with him, I'm willing to pay whatever price it takes. I'm willing to follow Jesus regardless of the cost. We ask that in His name. Amen. You worship with us. He 
canceled my debt and he called me his friend. Oh, when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We encourage you to stay connected through our social media channels throughout the week. Be safe and well and have an awesome week.